My name's Justin, Justin Booth Cliborne. Um, I'm the head of business development for SIOP. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why branding matters. We uh, just a little bit about about uh, SIOP first before before I talk about um, about branding. Um, so SIOP is actually a division of the US military. Um, so we borrowed their name, Psychological Operations, and we borrowed their motto as well, which is which is persuade, change, and influence. Um, and essentially what we do with the elevator pitch is we, we blur the line between marketing and entertainment. Everybody knows nobody wants to be advertised to anymore. Um, everybody can switch off. Uh, so we make entertainment and it's really marketing. Um, and, and what we believe is that uh, uh, the way to build a brand and the way to, to uh, connect with people emotionally uh, is through storytelling and um, work like this. Run for the hills, pick up your feet, and let's go. We did our jobs, pick up speed, now let's move. Oh, the trees can't grow without the sun in their eyes. And we can't live if we're too afraid to die. So uh, we do a lot of work in the game space, as you can see. We don't only work in the game space. We, we work with a bunch of different brands in, in a bunch of different industries, from Apple to Coke to Nike, uh, car companies, and, and uh, a bunch of different people. Um, so we, we know a little bit about building brands and, and connecting uh, brands to people uh, uh, through emotion and storytelling. Um, so as I say, I'm going to talk about why branding matters. So why, why does it matter, particularly in the gaming space? Um, obviously, you know, everybody knows this incredibly crowded space. Uh, how do you, how do you stand out from, from the crowd? Um, how do you cut through the clutter? Uh, how do you be like this guy? You know, stand out from the crowd and, and get people to notice you um, when it comes time to to download a particular game of a particular of a particular genre. Uh, we believe it all comes down to to branding. Um, I hear a lot when I meet co make companies. I hear a lot about um, importance of user acquisition, and uh, a lot of gaming companies are, are very um, data focused, which is great. And uh, obviously, performance marketing is very important. And I'm not, um, I'm not saying, forget performance marketing. Um, uh, you should, you should it's all be about the brand. It, we believe you have to do, you have to do both. Uh, and that's the way to, to build, um, to, to build a sustainable business, um, around your game or around your company. Um, I think a lot of game companies, um, you know, they, they forget that they're a brand too. Um, and and um, that can be another way of getting people, uh, separating yourself and getting people to, to uh, download your game as opposed to anybody else's game. So some branding basics, um, identifying your audience, obviously knowing who you talk to uh, is important, um, and where your place is in the ecosystem. And uh, these days, um, you, can, you can quickly identify, obviously there's the basics of you know, who you're talking to age-wise and who you're talking to geographically, but these days, um, marketing and brand marketing um, uh, taps into data like game companies do, but but they also use it to um, analyze audiences in terms of uh, what are their shared passions, what are they into. Um, authenticity is uh, a big uh, theme of marketing these days. 
because um, as I said, nobody wants to be marketed to, and people just spot um, spot marketing and spot advertising immediately and turn off if it's not authentic. Um, so, so one way to be authentic is to is to really understand what your audience, where they live, how they consume data, what what are they into, and what are the um, as I say, what are their shared passions, um, and and uh, what will resonate with them in terms of um, advertising, marketing, content that you make. Um, what do you stand for as a brand? Um, you know, it's important to, it, it, it sounds really basic, but it's important to, to know, to really kind of take a step back from your, your, your game and look beyond, okay, we're, we're a casual game or, or we're, or we're um, uh, a mid-core game or whatever, and, and really try and define your brand um, uh, and uh, who, it's related to who you're appealing to. So, um, what is the DNA of your brand? Uh, and we spend a lot of time tapping into um, the DNA of a brand and, and, and getting to the core of, of, of what the brand is about, be it a game, be it a drink, be it a car or whatever. Um, uh, and developing a voice and personality uh, is important. Are you, um, are you, uh, do you, do you, are you humorous? Are you fun and humorous? Are you serious? Are you trying to get people to um, engage with you intellectually, or are you? Is, is your game about uh, about fun, just casual uh, escapism for five minutes, or is it a deep world that you want people to to invest in and and um, and get into? Here's the big one um, about branding. Uh, it's important to develop good creative ideas when when um, uh, you're developing marketing communications. And uh, it's important to develop those ideas around the DNA of your brand. The best work that we've done um, really taps into the DNA of, of, of the brands that we work with. Um, we, look for the, we look for the core, we look for the USP. Uh, it's difficult to find USPs these days because, because uh, everybody, it, it, you know, a lot of things are the same. Car advertising is a good example. Um, you know, a lot of cars are, 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 are basically, basically similar in terms of the performance they deliver and, and the features that they have. Um, uh, but they have very separate brands. And and uh, a, a purchase is is a lot about emotion. Um, it's a lot about uh, uh, at the point of purchase, emotion plays a big part, which is why we keep coming back to um, connecting with people emotionally through content. What is what is your what is your point of difference? And if you can work that point of difference into um, some content. Uh, then, and you can find a hook, then you can stand out from the crowd. Some examples would, would obviously in the gaming space would be the use of celebrities. Um, so people remember Mobile Strike because of Arnold Schwarzenegger. People remember Game of War because of Kate Upton. Um, and, you know, they, they, uh, that works for them. They keep using them, that works. Um, but not everybody has the money to, to afford a celebrity. So find your, find, find what we do is try and help companies um, find their hook, find their core, and find their, their, their DNA. Um, and then consistency of voice is important across all your marketing communications, um, which, you know, you, you need to do UA, you need to do, I say you need to do brand advertising, um, you need to be in many different channels, and it, it really helps if, if your voice is consistent across all those different, all those different channels. Um, so we work with Clash, obviously, um, and uh, by way of example of, of what I'm talking about, um, so before, before we started working with, with Supercell, uh, they were making videos and they looked like the game and they told a story of the Hog Rider and made a 30 second story of the Hog Rider that looked like the game. Uh, when we came along, essentially what we did with Clash is, is, um, is we, we using the game as a, um, uh, as a starting point, we created an immersive world, and we were the ones that came up with um, the the characteristics and the personality and the high pitched voice of the hog rider.
Joker, um, and the, the fact that he like, oh, I love balloons, and um, and we gave him personality, and that's what people connect with. Um, so when we release some of our spots. Um, you know, we have seen people dress up as the characters and recreate our ads, recreate our stories frame for frame, um, and then put those out on YouTube. Uh, it, it's entertainment, but it's, but it's definitely marketing. It has a call to action at the end, um, but it's really entertainment, and, it's, it, and it really kind of transcends uh, marketing, and, and um, it's had you know, great results. We've, worked, we've made something like 40, 50 pieces of content for them uh, and help keep them at the top of the um, at the top of the the app store uh, and you can just see you know before before um, we came along they put that out they got 1.6 million views and then we came along and we were getting 32 million views uh, for essentially using the same character and the same the same story um, uh, okay I know what you're thinking Clash of Cans and Supercell have a ton of money, um, uh, and you know not everybody has that ton of money. Fair enough. Um, doesn't have to be expensive, you think. The principles are the same. And I'm going to show you another example, which is kind of at the other end of the spectrum. So Temple Run, I'm sure you all know Temple Run, been downloaded a billion times, um, and it. it uh, uh, they came to us and they said, um, we love what you did with Clash of Clans. Uh, what can you do for us? So, of course, I say, ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, you need, to, you need to do a really expensive CG spot. Um, we can do that with your characters and with your world. That will be great. And they went, no, we don't want to spend that money. Um, so uh, we, we analyzed them a little bit. We did a little bit of light strategy. And we figured out that... Um, they had a, uh, well, they told us they had a big Facebook audience that they were really doing nothing with. They had 11 million likes on Facebook. Um, so we had access to all these people, um, and they were about to launch Temple Run 2, so this was like a year and a bit ago. Uh, and we, we boiled down the problem to the, how, do we, how do we reintroduce Temple Run? How do we reinvigorate people uh, and bring new fans into the mix? Um, uh, and we got this sleeping giant of this audience that they basically um, demoted to, to tech support. Um, so what we did was we created a social media um, uh, content campaign around this idea of the demon monkey. I'm sure you all know who the demon monkey is. He chases you when, you, when you're, when you're um, stealing the idol. Uh, what does the demon monkey do in his day off? Um, and we made not CG, we made live action. <laughs> You feel like you are always running, always chasing the prize. But you are the prize. Center yourself and find the prize that is you. So again, blurring the line between marketing and entertainment. It's fun spots. It's a little gift to, to, uh, uh, to the people who know Temple Run, to everybody. It, it's, classic, it's a classic brand play. Not really, not really showing the game. It's just, uh, it's just tapping into the brand and tapping into the core of the brand. And um, it was a great success. I mean, this is... This is uh, you can see on the right there, these were the interactions. So these are likes, comments, and shares on Facebook. Uh, for the two years before the campaign, they were kind of bumping along, along the bottom, and they weren't really using Facebook that effectively. And then when we did our campaign, their interactions went through the roof, and we got the highest social reach ever for, for, for the game. And um, anecdotally, we got people commenting, saying, oh, these videos are so amazing. I'm going to share it with my, with, my, uh, with my friend, and we're going to download Temple Run again. And they shot up 200 places in the, in the app store when they, when they released the game. So that is why branding matters. Now you can go home. <laughs> Thank you. So who will have the, the first question for Justin? Anyone? Hi, uh, thanks Hi. for the presentation, it was brilliant. Uh, just, I, want, I was wondering about the, 
the logo of your company. The so logo? Yeah, yes, the black egg with some somebody. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think it means? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why a bird, though? It could be a person, right? Okay. Get, them, get them while they're young. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, everybody has a different interpretation. We yeah. we we kind of don't know what it means. Uh, we went through a, we went through a branding uh, our own branding exercise and, and logo exercise uh, uh, probably two three years into the company. So we we were founded in 2000, um, and uh, the designer came up with this logo, and we just it just resonated. It was just like that is great, and it's been a logo ever since. And we sort of you know we 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 have a loose explanation, but. You know. We like to let people come to their own conclusions. Probably more fun this way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Do you happen to remember what's the simplest, uh, simplest campaign that you ran that yielded uh, the most returns? The, the simplest? The simplest, yeah. The simplest with, yeah. The, with the best returns? Yes. Well, um, sometimes, so uh, we've been around for 16 years and um, often we work through ad agencies uh, with brands, so brands like Coke and Nike and, and um, car companies, and they all have ad agencies. Um, and the way it works is the ad agency uh, uh, kind of develops the overall plan and uh, comes up with the ideas, and then they come to people like us to to execute it and make them because ad agencies really don't make anything. Um, so they come to us to make them and then win awards. Um, and often we don't know what the what the um, what the results are. Um, in the last few years, we've been working more and more with brands directly, both in the gaming community, but also uh, with other brands. So we're getting a little bit more um, feedback on what's the most successful. Honestly, Temple Run is one of the most successful things we've done um, in terms of the ratio of, of simple to, to um, uh, success. Um, I mean, you know, as I said, Clash have a lot of money. Uh, we operate at quite a high level. Where we're, Time Magazine called us the Pixar of advertising, so we, you know, usually when brands come to us, they're they're ready to spend quite a bit of money, um, uh, and uh, but that's why that's why I like the temporary example because. Yeah, you know, we made eight of those. They spent less than you know the whole thing, including making the demon monkey suit with Jim Henson's, who made the Muppets. Uh, they spent less than two hundred grand, and and it was it was a huge success for them. In fact, we're going to be making more. They just they just emailed me yesterday and said they want to make some more. So, so. Justin, so say we, you deal with a brand that doesn't have any recognizable characters. Yeah, a, a great brand, but no characters. Yeah, and they get it into a gaming space. So would you say that they have to wait and develop a line of characters that then can be, you know, um, used in the games? Or just they, well, just, you know, it's not a big deal. You, you would I, mean, still... no, I mean, not, you know, not, I wouldn't say you always have to have characters. I mean, we're best known for, for um, character-driven emotional storytelling. That's, that's kind of our sweet spot. But... We do a lot of stuff which isn't about characters. I guess it just, you know, when you think about when you think about making short form content that emotionally connects with people, kind of the easiest way is 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 with a character um, or a person or you know something that something that it's 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 a it's a hook like anything else. But a hook can also be you know, a great piece of design. We're a design company at our, at our heart. Um, and so we've done plenty of work which, which isn't character-based, um, which is just, you know, beautifully designed, I guess. I mean, look at uh, Apple for a long time, you know, uh, is changing now, but, but, and we've done a lot of work with Apple, um, and a lot of the work we've done with Apple doesn't have any people in it at all. It just, it's, just, it's just their product. Um, uh, but the hook is the beautiful innovation and the beautiful design. Um, so there are other ways, there are other ways in. Um, but characters are fun. Well, thanks for staying. Okay. I appreciate it. I thought yeah. nobody was going to show up. So. Okay, yeah. thank you, Justin. <laughs>